more than 32 million Americans are considered morbidly obese. That is, more than 50 million Americans are considered obese. I was one of those statistics. I started my journey at 32, 360 pounds. I am five foot, five and a half inches. It had gotten to the point where I was almost bed bound. I was actually having to use a rollator walker just to get around because I was in such severe pain and so ill. I know a lot of people are gonna wonder how do you even get 360 pounds at 32 and get yourself into that shape? Well, I had some childhood trauma that I had learned to eat my emotions, to not deal with them. And I didn't actually gain tons of weight till about my late 20s. Life kind of happened. I got more and more depressed. My poor husband had to listen to me every single morning say, I wish I didn't wake up. I used to think that I was the only one going through this, but as I've shared my journey, I've realized there are so many people out there suffering and they themselves think they're the only one going through this. And I want you to know that you are not alone. I had gotten to the point where I had 16 different comorbidities at that age. I was lucky with the fact that I wasn't taking tons of drugs, but I was a type 2 diabetic. I was only having to take oral medications at the time, but I was well headed to being an insulin dependent diabetic. I had fatty liver. I have three autoimmune scleroderma, fibromyalgia, and rheumatoid arthritis. My list went on and on of my illnesses. Around June 23rd, 2022, I ended up at the hospital thinking I was dying, and I had been wanting to. I was just too scared to do it. I was miserable. I was severely depressed. My anxiety had gotten out of control where I didn't want to leave the house for days or weeks or months at a time. I stopped driving. My life was literally spiraling down. I didn't want to live. And then I ended up in the hospital. And I remember looking at my husband as I'm wailing, crying in pain, thinking he has been with me at that time for six years. He has watched me go from thinner to thicker to thinner to thicker to now super morbidly obese. And he had stuck with me and it just, it hit me like a ton of bricks. I had been being selfish. And I don't mean that in a negative way, just more matter of fact. I had been being selfish. I was choosing what I wanted in that moment to feel better, to not feel my emotions over his needs, over our family's needs. It had gotten to the point where I could hardly wipe my own bottom. Like hygiene was a task. I mean, I would literally take a shower, get out of the shower and be profusely sweating. I, I just, I literally wanted to die. But I remember looking at him and thinking, oh my God, I've been choosing myself over him every single time I ate bad. And I realized I didn't want to die then. I realized I loved him. I loved him so very much and that if I was the reason I had gotten there, if I had made those choices that got me in the hospital that sick and ill, then guess what? I had the choice to make a different choice to change the trajectory of my life. That was one of the most powerful moments along my journey was realizing if I got myself there, if I was choosing selfishness, then I could choose differently. And that's what led me to carnivore. Now, I've done tons of diets. I've done whole foods, veganism. I've done keto. I've done paleo. I've done the whole 30. I've done Weight Watchers. I have been overweight some pretty much from my entire adulthood in my teenage years. I've tried so much. I got introduced to carnivore through my brother, which then also was Michaela Peterson. And Watching her videos, I realized, okay, she has juvenile RA. I have all these autoimmune issues, plus God, oh my God, so much more else going on with me. And I'm like, if she can do it, then I think there's hope for me. And along this journey, I have discovered a handful of very, very important things. I'm a binge eater. I will always be a binge eater, and that's okay, but I had to figure out how to control it. Every other single diet that I did, it didn't make me face the fact that carbs and sugars were my addiction. It was my cocaine, it was my crack, my alcohol to being an alcoholic, right? Because 
alcoholics can't have just a little bit. They have everything or they have nothing. It's a complete abstaining of it. I had never in my life abstained from carbs and sugar completely, right? Because keto, you eat a lot less, but you still eat some. And once I finally understood, okay, if I'm like an alcoholic with sugar and carbs, then carnivores for me, why? I get all the nutrients I need. I get satiated with eating so much less. And honestly, we save so much money because I throw nothing out at all. And I don't eat what I want. I eat what I need. There's none of this being picky about my food. But as I said, the biggest, biggest reason I did and still do carnivore to this day is because I literally cannot have carbs and sugars. And the next question people are gonna ask, what about fruits and vegetables? They're not that bad. And the thing is, is fruit is delicious, but I would eat too much. I could easily binge on it. And when you have insulin resistance, your body can't deal with the sugars. Plus it would just trigger me to want to eat more sugar. Vegetables, vegetables can be fine for a lot of people, but they have things like oxalates in them that cause inflammation. Well, three autoimmune issues I already had tons of inflammation on top of the diabetes and all of the inflammation from being insulin resistant. So I don't eat vegetables, why? Because I'm trying to reduce the most amount of inflammation out of my body. So this is 11 months for me and it has resulted in a completely different life for me. I wake up every single day so happy to wake up I can't tell you that I've ever felt that way in my entire life, just day after day, happy that I'm alive, happy that I can move around. I went from using a walker, hardly able to walk a few hundred feet, to now I walk five and six miles daily. I go hiking, I go biking, I play racquetball. I do pretty much anything I want to do. Within six weeks, I did paddle boarding. I was terrible at it, but the fact is, is I did it. I was physically still struggling with it, but mentally I was there. There has been huge changes for me, not only on the physical side, which I think are amazing, but also the biggest part is my mental changes. But before we get too far into the mental aspect, let's go over the health aspects. I've lost 119 pounds in 11 months. I went from wearing a size 28 to now I wear a size 14 jeans. That is huge. That is literally half the size and pants that I was wearing. And keep in mind, I'm only 60% way through my journey. I still have a bit to go. I reduced my comorbidities from 16 to five. And three of them are still the autoimmune because I haven't cleared them off from the rheumatologist yet. I am still technically morbidly obese. I'm about to hit the obese category, but as I said, I'm only 60% of the way through my journey. My fifth diagnosis is I still have rosacea and that has gotten immensely, immensely better. As far as the autoimmune though, it was very, very debilitating. The rashes, the pain, my skin would be so painful just with the wind blowing on it. I could hardly use my hands. Trying to write a paragraph by hand was impossible for me at the time. And now I can do pretty much anything I want. The only time I notice flare ups and things like that is when I do leather working or hand sewing for hours at a time, the next day my hands will be a bit crampy, but it is at least 90% better compared to what it was. And let's not forget the fact that my knees killed me, my hips, my back. That was a big reason I had to use a walker as my back would hurt so bad. I got off the walker in about five, six weeks from when I started. It was hard. I had to sit a lot, but I did that. And now, as I said before, I walk four, five, six miles every single day. No walker. As far as my blood work, I've tracked it all along. My A1C started at 7.1. The last time I had it checked, it was 5.4. I am no longer a type two diabetic, not just a diabetic in remission. I have cured my type two diabetes. I can pass a five hour glucose test with flying colors now. I reversed my fatty liver. I reversed my GERD. I reversed my sleep apnea. I reversed my chronic, chronic indigestion I had 
all the time, no matter what I ate. My triglycerides went from 343 to 106, and I'm having them rechecked next week. And one of the absolute best, most embarrassing things is I have no problem reaching parts of my body anymore like I had. I cannot tell you how absolutely horrible that is beyond anything anyone could ever imagine if you've not been there not being able to like reach part of yourself because you are so big i felt like scum i felt like less than human that i couldn't even do basic hygiene tasks and now i can as far as the mental changes, if you really want to see the changes, go watch a few of my first videos. My voice has changed, my attitude has changed, my personality has been able to bloom. At some point I realized the weight not only helped me like not deal with the emotions, but it helped me hide myself because I just, I hated myself. And now I truly love who I am. I have had some terrible things happen to me, but I've come to realize that without all of the bad and the good things in my life, I wouldn't be who I am today. And I have to say, I actually love who I am today. That is such a huge change from despising who you are that you actually wanted to just die. I was too scared to do it and just not wanting to be on this earth. And something I've realized is no matter how small we feel, we have no idea the impact we're going to have on the person, next person we meet. So no matter where you are sitting in your life, know that your life is valuable because you have no idea how big of an impact you might have on somebody else. Okay, I've pulled myself together. <laughs> I want to go out and do things. I want to be a part of life. I don't want to just suffer through life. I want to have an impact. And that is one of the biggest reasons that I made this channel is because if I've suffered and other people have suffered, I want people, I want you, I want everyone to know that this change is 100% possible no matter how far down you feel like you are. I mean. Lord, I was 360 pounds at 32, hardly moving around to the point of almost being bed bound. If you are there, no, you have this in you. It is hard. It stretches you beyond any kind of imagination, but you can absolutely do this. Another large mental change is my anxiety is gone. My depression's gone. I'm almost off my antidepressant. And I'd been on it since I was 12 years old, or on and off of it since I was 12 years old. I've been depressed my entire life. Life does now not seem like a rainy cloud following me everywhere. Yes, I still have moments of depression, but not this chronic forever, the world is terrible place, I don't wanna be here feeling. I have excitement, I look forward to life. And some other big changes is my anxiety. I used to get anxious about everything. My husband would go, I'm like, oh my God, are we gonna be homeless? Like I would go from zero to 1 billion in two seconds over one half with zero context. I don't do that anymore. Stuff happens, I deal with it. My anxiety is like 98% better from what it was. And then the mental toughness and fortitude that I've gotten out of this. I was so naive and weak mentally. I let the smallest things bother me. Someone said something, oh my God, I'm a terrible person. I hate myself. I'm a failure. Someone would say you're fat and I would just break down and fall apart and crumble. My identity was broken. And now someone says I'm fat. I'm like, yes, I am. <laughs> it doesn't have anything to do with the value in me. I found my intrinsic value in myself versus other people's opinions of who I should or am. That's a huge thing. And I found that through integrity. And if you wanna know about that, I do tons of videos on integrity and how I restored that. But huge, huge momentous changes. Thank you for taking the time to listen to my journey. I hope it gives you some inspiration wherever you're at in life and you may not even be overweight. Just remember, I'm only 60% of the way through my journey, so I hope you continue to follow me on my path.